Hey and welcome! We're here today at the Woodchuck Lodge, Roxbury, New York, Western Catskill Mountains. Very picturesque, beautiful. This was the home of John Burroughs, author, naturalist, philosopher some would say, the father of the modern conservation movement as we know it. And John Burroughs spent uh, the last part of his life in the earliest 20th century sitting right here on this porch writing, taking in the days with his friends uh, Harvey Firestone, Thomas Edison, Henry Ford. He was a humble man, but he had influence in many good circles. It's really not hard when you see this to, uh, to imagine them sitting right here, taking in the days and having a glass of lemonade. Structure built in 1860, been lovingly cared for by the local historic society. Um, it's on the National Registry of Historic Places. And um, we're here today. They asked us to come out and take a look. We've got bears and we've got some honeybees. So uh, follow me around the corner. We're going to come take a look at this. Okay, so we've got bears. And the reason we've got bears is we've got honeybees. The honeybees are in the second story window. They're coming and going in the corner. You can see them right there. And uh, we've got a bear trying to get at them on the second story. And he's getting himself a toehold on the window here. And he's reaching almost all the way up there. And he's peeling a side away and he's ripped the trim off the top of the window. And Historical Society is not happy with this. So they've asked us to come in, gently peel the siding away, and remove this colony of bees so that the bear is no longer doing this damage here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get in there, we're going to set up some scaffolding here, and we're going to start peeling it apart and see what we got in there. Okay, so the thing is, we're an hour and a half away from home and civilization, really. So we had to bring everything, everything you think you could want and more. So uh, we've just brought it all at the kitchen sink here. We have the BVAC, and this was, uh, this was a little invention by our friend Mark Antman. Thing works great. Put the vacuum hose in one side, you adjust your bleed so you're not slamming bees into the box too hard on this side. You get all your bees vacuumed out, you put it over your hive body, Voila, bees go into the hive body. Thing works like a champ. We've used it a bunch of times. And uh, I like it very much. And the heart of the bee vacuum is the Norelco Genie. This has Mark Antman written all over it. He also has a pocket fisherman, a smokeless ashtray, and a, uh, a travel razor. Uh, <laughs> rechargeable, of course, in his array of Norelco tools. Um, but it works great, and we love it. Pool hose. So we have light access. We don't have to have all of this on the scaffolding with us. We can just take the hose up there and, uh, and uh, we'll get them that way. Brought the kit just in case. Probably won't use a smoker. We don't want to drive them in with the smoke, but it's good to have. Bee brush. You're going to want a bee brush. Brush them off the combs. Flat bar to peel siding. We've got buckets to pull honey and comb out. We've got hive bodies and frames to put the brood in when we actually cut the brood out. It's kind of floppy, so what we do is we'll just wire it into, a, into an empty frame like this and uh, wire it in, we'll rubber band it in, and we just put it right back in here, dump your bees in, and you got a viable hive ready to go. Normally I do the hero complex, you know, and I bare hand in and all of that business, but cutting bees out of a house, they can get angry. So we brought our veil, and we're going to use the veil today. Um, pails, whatnot, it's pretty much all of it. So. Let's set up that scaffolding and get going on this project. Okay, I just want to take a minute before we get going. And uh, you know, a lot of people do this. They take bees out of houses. You can get $500 for doing a bee removal. That's not what we do. We're actually doing this for free for these people today. And what we get out of it is the genetic potential that is inside this wall. We run a breeding program and, uh, and these genetics are what we're interested in. Bees that have lived feral on their own for, uh, for years and years in a house. So uh, that's why we do it. And um, so we're gonna tear into this here. So let's see how it all goes. Okay, so what we're guessing is they're coming in right into the corner here 
and they're going down. There's a nice big opening. They've been in here a while and uh, they're going down. So my guess is that they're coming down. And what we've seen in the past in these old houses is there's a stud every 16 or 12 inches, depending, um, and they'll just be right between two studs. And we're hoping that's what we see here and they haven't gone beyond it too much. So we're gonna start peeling some siding away and see which way it goes. Okay, so here's the nest. Oh, there's lots of... Oh, okay, so not so bad. A little different than what I was thinking. Okay, so we have our first look inside here. And what we're seeing is they're right between this stud and this stud. And this is all old comb from, it looks like, a long time ago. The wax moths have had at it. So at one time, this was an enormous nest, and now it's just a very big nest. So we're gonna continue to peel siding and see how low it goes. Okay, so first piece of siding is revealed. This is all old comb from a previous nest. And you can see it's all kind of brittle, unoccupied. The wax moths have had their way with it. And that's all gotta come out too. Um, and then we've got some tar paper here, and we're gonna reveal the next section of comb. And these combs are all in this way. And the last one we took out, they were just in nice big sheets we could peel them out, but basically this looks pretty good. And they're not too mean. But uh, to keep the population down, we're going to run the vacuum over them and pull some of those bees off and we'll dig down a little deeper. Okay, so we're going to cut this next comb free. It's full of brood, capped, uncapped pollen, and it is just about perfect to fit in a medium frame, which is great because that's what we brought. So we're going to just ever so gently try and disconnect it. It's connected at the back and the top. I can feel it giving way here. A little patience is always good. Not always my strong suit, but the bees are teaching me. Oh, it's full of just running nectar. That is beautiful. Okay, so here it comes. Nice and easy. I say, here it comes. <laughs> nice and easy. I said, here it comes. Here it comes. Nice. Nice patch of brood. Don't see the queen. Now. We'll measure it up for the medium frame. And I'll get all the brood. Okay, we're gonna cut this side. And we're gonna cut this side. like it was made to go there. And we'll get our trusty rubber bands. Thank you, McMaster Car. Shout out to my boys at McMaster Car. Okay, not quite there. Okay. Okay, so there's one side, 
and we'll take it and we'll flip it. All right. Oops, we got the hive tool trapped in there. Get out of there. And just like that, I'll put a third one in. Looks like the bees drew it right in there, doesn't it? And we'll just put that in our hive body. And we'll dump those bees right onto there in just a few minutes. And it'll give them a good strong start when we put them in their new home. Okay, we're gonna cut this last, these last two combs out. They're mostly drone brood. And uh, we're hoping to, oh, 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 there she is. There's the queen. There she is. Nice. Queen catcher activated. Come on, baby, come on. And, oh, oh, oh. Come on, get in there. You never know if you're gonna pinch her in this thing. They say it won't happen, but. And there she is. Excellent. Our new breeder queen for the John Burroughs line. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Okay, we gotta get this thing closed up, get these bees back to the home yard, get them normalized. Excellent, this is the reason we came today. Okay, so that's a wrap. Uh, Woodchuck Lodge is buttoned up minus the bees. Um, we've got her just like we left, and uh, I think John Burroughs would definitely approve of what we did here today. Um, thanks to the Historical Society for asking us to do this. It was a real pleasure. And uh, in closing, we just wanted to share the wonderful views that we've been enjoying all day as we do this. And uh, I'm sure we're very inspiring to John Burroughs in his writings here.